get it immediately. This is a continuation of the texturing and modeling of the medieval townhouse tutorial. In this episode, we are doing texture painting and some of the panel painting. Okay, so what we're going to go through now is uh, texturing one of uh, these areas. So you can see in uh, these two planes here, if I click on that plane and pull it out, you can see this is one plane and you can see how I've textured it there. And I'm going to go through uh, the way I did that uh, so you can do the same on your model. So the same here with the door, window and uh, those sort of black areas to try and give some depth. Also I use these black areas to tell me exactly where on my map certain things were so I could take it into a, an editing program such as Photoshop or um, GIMP um, so I could edit the image. So let's click on this and this is the area we're going to do. We're going to put a window in here and we're going to put some plaster in these areas uh, so we can make it look like uh, the other two and then we'll finish off with these areas later on and that will be my house finished. Um, what we want to do is go to the front view uh, which is three on my number, but it's actually the side view, uh, and go to orthographic. Then I can, when I'm unwrapping it, I can do a project from view. I'll show you what I mean. So um, let's go into edit mode, select all, and go U to unwrap. Okay, and what I want to do is project from view. That will mean it's exactly the same shape as I'm seeing here. It makes it much easier for um, painting and editing. Um, I'll scale it up so I can use the UVs. Right, what I want to do as well is create a new texture here. I don't want to use my oak beam texture. I'm creating a new one entirely. Okay, so um, press the plus button here and we'll call this um, uh, roof side plaster oops, plaster bottom. Okay, so now I've got a new material here. Uh, let's create our material as well down here. So that's my material, so my shader for it. So uh, we can put add uh, texture, image texture, and let's just save this first. So image, save as, so I know exactly where it's going. Roof side plaster uh, bottom. So it's the bottom of the roof uh, side. <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense, but it makes sense to me. Uh, and press save image. Okay, so it's in there, and now I should be able to click on these double arrows here, and uh, roof side plaster bottom is there. Okay, so if I link that up, we get just black, which is good, that's what I want. Uh, so now I can uh, go into the paint mode and start painting the plaster on and things like that. Uh, I'll paint the plaster on, uh, mark an area out, and then I'll put the window in in an editing program, which I think will be a little bit easier than painting it on. Not a lot, but it's just another technique which is worth looking at. Let's scale this up so we're using the whole of the UV map, we might as well. Okay, um, so let's go to Texture Paint. Right, so I'm in my brush settings. I'll create a new brush uh, to show you what's going on. So just press the plus icon there. If I want to see my brushes, I click on the actual brush there. And there is the text draw brush that I've created, 001 or whatever it's called there. I can rename it if I want to uh, Plaster Brush which is what it's going to be. So I'll be painting on the plaster and if I want to paint using an image texture I go into here where it says texture and add a new. Okay so this is going to be plaster brush texture. Okay in order to add a texture to this I need to go over to my texture panel over here. So I click on my textures, uh, make sure I've got the uh, brush texture selected so now I can um, put an image in here so let's go and find my plaster uh, press open and where is my plaster let's go to here and find out there it is white plaster I've got there okay press enter now that should be in here so um, I can paint on like this which isn't working uh, because I'm on multiply let's try that and put it back up to white. Um, if you press the F key that will change the size of your brush and you can paint on your plaster. I'm not liking this because it's actually tiling it. You can probably see these lines here. I mean it, it sort of works but it's not what I'm after. I want it about the same size as this. 
So if I go to what's called stencil, I get this stencil up. And if I make it about there, I can now trace from the stencil onto my picture. I'll put the strength up to one um, full strength. There we go. I'm just using my mouse at the moment. Usually I use my uh, graphics tablet for this. I find it a little bit easier, but this is fine. Obviously a window's going in there, but I'll leave it like that for now. Um, it doesn't matter too much. I guess I'll change that a bit later on. You can see up here that there's um, a few bits missing. In fact, there's one just about there that will make sure we uh, clear up. So let's make sure we've got it all. Lovely job. Right, so um, happy with that. The plaster's on. Uh, let's come out of here and I'm going to go uh, to just my normal drawing brush. Okay, so I'm out of there and it looks the same. Although I've added in these little cracks. Can you see these little cracks just there? And that's quite simple. I mean, they're not particularly effective, but um, from a distance, which is uh, when we zoom out and scroll around, you can sort of see that they work okay. So let's go back to our view, zoom in, and paint a few cracks. I will use my graphics tablet now. Um, right, so what I want to do um, is make quite a dark area. So what you do, um, in your brush, you can choose multiply. If I just use, um, let's say mix, and choose uh, a dark color, and make my brush small, I can paint on like this. But um, it actually overwrites the material behind it. If I choose multiply, it will actually just darken the material, so the the pl the plaster itself will stay there, and it will just make it look darker. So it'll be like this, and it'll just be darker, which is what I want. I don't actually want the plaster disappearing. So let's uh, scroll right down and uh, make some cracks. I'll go a bit smaller than that, even. Right down and make an area there. Fill it in a little bit. So I want a dark edge there. And give it a little, like it's cracking through there. A little bit of detail. I think tiny bits of detail uh, make all the difference. And you might be a better artist than me, so you'll find this even easier. Okay, we'll have another crack that comes out here. It's obviously good to study um, actual um, old plaster that's cracking, then you'll get a better idea and you'll be able to do a great job. Um, I have had a look at some plaster but when I was doing the other pieces and I noticed these sort of things. So you get the sort of dark edge and the very slightly edge, um, slightly light a bit inside that and that would look like sort of chunks had fallen out of it. Okay, so you get the idea. Very basic and simple. Uh, what I haven't done, um, obviously the, I, on these ones I've done a sort of dark edge in here just to give it some more depth. So I'll do that now, I'll give it a nice sort of dark edge, put my brush a bit bigger, not so dark as those other pieces I just drew, just give it some sort of depth. The other handy bit about this is that I'll be able to see where exactly I need to put my window. Um, the also, also the useful thing about this is that it gives a bit of shade uh, and difference to uh, the plaster itself so it doesn't look so uniform. I'm just going to make a few more cracks and things around here so I'll speed that bit up a little bit. If I do it on the inside especially then I'll be able to see exactly where the window goes. So Okay, so I'm happy with those. All I need now to do is add my window in there. So I'll take this into an editing, pr editing program, add a window in, and um, you'll get the idea. What I'll need to do is save this image. So save, make sure you, when it's got a little, little star on it, you need to make sure you save the image. Um, and if I just double check, save image as, yep, so roof side plaster bottom is what I'm looking for when I take it into Photoshop. I can open that up. OK, so here is my um, texture, and I need to bring a uh, medieval window into there. And here's one 
I've got so I'll just grab that whilst I'm in Photoshop paste it in there select the window part around here and um, inversing my selection control shift I press delete so oops need to rasterize the layer there we go press delete to get rid of that and now I just need to resize by showing transform controls resize in fact control D is deselect resize my window okay it's not a Photoshop tutorial so I'll let you figure these things out with Photoshop yourself but there we go there's my window in my texture and if I save that as a PNG again in fact I should just be able to save apply the changes uh, as a PNG there's the original one I mean it could it might be worth saving it out as a slightly different name uh, just so you've got the original as well and you could sh save your Photoshop um, file as well so you've got the textures there go back into your blender file uh, and load the image texture in so I'm bringing that in there and hook it up and there we go um, I don't like the way it's across the side there I suppose it's an old window so they may have uh, done that in the past who knows right so we're, we're getting there with our um, house and what I need to do now is the same sort of thing for this top panel here and the side panels there and we end up with a decent looking uh, model so there we go thanks for watching